Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us, us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, uh, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. God bless the reading of God's word. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. Luke 2, 1 to 3. This is how Luke starts his account of the birth of the baby Jesus. Why do Mary and Joseph need to make the trip from their hometown of Nazareth to Bethlehem? When you look at it, Mary is pregnant and about to give birth to a child. It is not the best of times to be traveling to Bethlehem. If you are about to give birth, wouldn't you want to be in your hometown so that you can get all the family support you need as you go through this experience? Yet every year when we celebrate Christmas, we are reminded that Mary and Joseph must make that trip to Bethlehem because Joseph comes from the house and line of David. Bethlehem is the hometown of the great King David of Israel. Joseph is a descendant of King David. Caesar Augustus has decreed that everyone goes to their hometown to be registered. We are also grateful to Luke who records that Jesus is born during the rule of Caesar Augustus while Quirinus is the governor of Syria. Luke gives us some historical details of when Jesus is born. Joseph brings the pregnant Mary to Bethlehem. Mary is pledged to be married to Joseph. Luke 2, 6-7 While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Mary's baby is also a king. However, when you look at the circumstances in which he is born, you hardly think he is a king. He's born in a stable, he's placed in a manger, uh, there is no guest room available for them. He is not born in a palace like Caesar Augustus. 
While Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus are in the stable in Bethlehem, something happens to the shepherds in the neighboring fields near Bethlehem. They are looking after the sh their sheep that night. It is a dark night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Luke 2, 9 to 12. Uh, the angel calls this baby a Savior. Uh, he is also the Messiah, the Lord. He is uh, the King. The word Messiah means anointed one or the chosen one. Israel has been waiting for a long time for this Messiah. Uh, the Jews in Jesus' time hoped that this Messiah will liberate them from the Romans. Caesar Augustus' real name is Gaius Octavian. He is the grandnephew and later the adopted son of Julius Caesar. He is like the firstborn son of a family and has the first right of inheritance in family fortunes. In 27 BC, uh, Caesar Augustus is recognized as the sole leader of the Roman world. Having achieved this position, he's now more of a god than a man. Uh, this is an inscription found in the first century. Divine Caesar Augustus, son of a god, imperator of land and sea, and savior of the whole world. Because Augustus Caesar is the emperor, he is divine. Uh, he is the emperor of land and sea and savior of the whole world. Therefore, Luke 2 is a story of two kings. The first one is a baby born in a stable in Bethlehem. The second is an emperor. When he writes this story, Luke refers to this emperor by his official title. Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus has just ruled that a census of all the people in the empire be done for taxation purposes. Joseph obeys this decree from the emperor Caesar. And that is why Mary and Joseph move from Nazareth to Bethlehem despite Mary's pregnancy. Joseph's family originally uh, comes from Bethlehem. Joseph is a descendant of King David. Jesus might be a king, but he is a baby born in a stable in Bethlehem. Uh, before the shepherds arrive, it is only Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus, and of course, the animals. It is very quiet. There is no fanfare. There is no champagne or family celebration. Mary and Joseph just have barely come to town. Uh, Jesus is born. They need to recover from the journey and the birth. Mary is feeding the baby, Jesus, near the sheep. Uh, Joseph is cleaning up after the birth of Jesus. It is just Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus, enjoying each other's company. Uh, maybe we should focus on enjoying each other's company uh, during Christmas. Here is a story of Maureen. Maureen usually celebrates Christmas with her mother. Last Christmas, my mother and I agreed not to give each other Christmas presents. Instead, we decided that we would enjoy the holiday by spending time together, going to church, and visiting with family. Um, besides saving money, uh, mother and I decided that we wanted to focus on the true spirit of Christmas. As Christmas Day neared, I, it, it felt slightly odd not to be caught up in the shopping, buying, giving frenzy. Then I felt something stir inside me that was refreshing and a bit startling. Instead of dwelling what I could get mother for Christmas, I reflected how precious she and other members of the family are to me. Instead of competing with other shoppers for the best deal at the best price, I smiled more readily and was more available to hold a door open for a stranger. Instead of filling my hours with budget juggling and cost comparisons, I prayed for deeper gratitude and joy at the marvelous, wondrous gift God has given 
us in Jesus Christ. On Christmas Day, Mother and I agreed that the holiday was our best yet, relaxed, inspiring, and happy. However, the shepherds arrive. The whole town of Bethlehem become aware of the baby Jesus. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Luke 2, 19. Luke records Mary as doing this right after the shepherds leave them and return to their fields to look after the sheep. Things become quiet again. There is just Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. Mary is catching some breath and pondering, pondering what has been happening so far. It's been a long journey for them. Yet, the angels are given a sign. Sorry, yet, the shepherds are given a sign by the angel. They shall find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. In some ways, this would have been an easy sign to look for. It is not often that you can find a baby lying in a manger. Uh, to get uh, to a manger, one needs to look for a stable. I can imagine these rowdy shepherds disturbing the peace of small town Bethlehem that faithful night uh, when the angels appeared to them. It would not have been a quiet affair. What's more, what do they do after they see Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? They spread word concerning the baby Jesus to the whole town. Not only do they tell others about the baby, they also let others know about the angels and what they said. If Mary is hoping for a quiet aftermath of the birth, the shepherds do, sure do not cooperate with such hope. Luke is the only gospel writer who talks about this episode of the shepherds and the angels. Matthew, Mark, and John are silent about it. I often wonder how Luke found out about this episode of the shepherds and the angels. At the beginning of his gospel, Luke tells us that he carefully investigated what happened and interviewed eyewitnesses. Perhaps Luke interviewed some of the shepherds who were part of the group that night. But I think that the most telling part of this account is found in this verse. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Luke 1 verse 19. Uh, sorry, Luke 2 verse 19. How does Luke know that Mary treasures all these things in her heart? Who revealed to Luke what was going on in the mind and the heart of Mary? It must have been someone close to Mary or Mary herself. It is not to the palace of King Herod that the angels appeared to. It is not to the most holy place of the Jerusalem temple that the angels appear to. It is to lowly shepherds in the fields near Bethlehem. I have read that at the time of Jesus, shepherds stood at the bottom rung of the Palestinian social ladder. They shared the same low status as tax collectors. Only Luke mentions them in his account of Jesus' birth. Matthew, Mark, and John do not. The story of the lowly shepherds of Bethlehem show us that our God is a grassroots God. You don't have to be a celebrity to come to God. God is not interested in the titles you have after your name or your bank account. God is not interested in whether you are a film star or the CEO of a multinational company. God is interested in you. God is interested in your heart. God is interested in what you treasure and ponder in your heart. What do you treasure right now? What are you pondering in your heart? Is your heart ready for God? Do you mean business with God? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. This is the message of Christmas. This is the message of Advent. Christmas is more than the Christmas dinner or the Christmas tree. Christmas is about Christ, the one and only Son given by a God who loves us, 
the world he created. Our God is therefore a grassroots God. He is interested in the lowly shepherds of the people who live in the villages like Nazareth. The shepherds are the messengers to the people of Bethlehem. These shepherds tell the common and ordinary people of Bethlehem about the birth of the Savior. However, these shepherds are not the first messengers. Uh, while they are in the fields keeping over watch their sheep, suddenly an angel of the Lord appears in front of them. The glory of the Lord shines around them. They are terrified. Uh, this angel tells them that in their town, Bethlehem, David's town, a Savior uh, has been born to them. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The original New Testament Greek word for angel is angelos, which means messenger. Before the shepherds become messengers, the original messengers, the angels, announce the birth of the Savior, the birth of the Savior to them. Um, all heaven opens. The king has come down to earth with his entourage. One angel goes ahead to alert the shepherds of his coming. Then the whole entourage of angels appear singing. The king has arrived, yet he arrives in a manger in a stable in Bethlehem. Years ago, during the presidential term of Dwight Eisenhower, the president was vacationing in Denver. It came to his attention that a six-year-old by the name Paul Haley was dying of inoperable cancer, and he had one great dream, uh, to someday meet the president. Dwight Eisenhower made an act. Uh, that will long outlive his great speeches. He said to one of his aides, let's go see young Paul Haley. They got into the presidential limousine and they drove over one August Sunday morning to the home of Paul Haley, who didn't know he was coming. Flags on the fenders were flying as this black limousine drove up. The doors flew open and out walked the president who knocked on the door. Mr. Donald Haley, the father wearing jeans, was an old... Uh, uh, wearing blue jeans and old dirty shirt and one day's growth of beard opened the door. He said, yes, can I help you? And the president responded, is Paul here? Tell, the pre tell him the president would like to see him. And little Paul, to his amazement, walked around his father's legs and stood and looked up in the face of the man he admired most. Dwight Eisenhower kneeled down, shook his hand and told him, and took him out to see the presidential limousine. And before he could say goodbye, he hugged little Paul Haley. They shook hands again and he left. Uh, the neighbors talked about this event for months. Only one man was not entirely happy about it, and that was Donald Haley. He said, how can I forget standing there dressed like I was in those jeans and an old dirty shirt and an unshaven face to meet the president of the United States? Is Paul here? Tell him the president would like to see him. Are you here? The angels of heaven would like to tell you that the king is here. The shepherds of Bethlehem would like to tell you that the king is here. He would like to see you this Christmas. Will you spend some time with Jesus this Christmas? Amen.